It used to be the case that you'd only choose React Native because it could save you time or cost compared to developing on both Android or iOS native platforms. But it was pretty well accepted that the app you ended up with would never be as good as the native counterpart. Well, it looks like that has completely changed. React Native is now a valid choice for better developer experience, performance, cost, even hiring the right talent. So let's take a look at how far React Native has come in recent years and why I think it's the best platform for developing on mobile today. So I recently built a brand new app in React Native and the reason I chose it initially was because I had a lot of React experience and so I figured a lot of those skills would be transferable and I did work with React Native eight plus years ago. The main goal at that point was just to get an MVP out as quick as possible. But I was acutely aware from my experience eight plus years ago that the performance probably wasn't going to be that good and there was probably going to be a lot of headache integrating things like native modules. It became apparent pretty quickly during development that all of those problems have completely gone away, mainly because of all the massive performance improvements that the React Native team have made and mainly due to the fact that now you can wrap your app in tools like Expert. You know, React Native was always advertised as this kind of tool that avoided you from having to interact with all of the native platforms. Just use the web skills that you've already got and you can build mobile apps with it. But the reality of that was never actually true. You'd spend tons of time in Android Studio or iOS trying to integrate all of the native dependencies. So of course it was a huge pain doing any kind of integration work beyond the absolute basics. And the advertised benefits of React Native quickly melted away when you were doing anything even a little bit complex. This is all completely different now. And I have to say the developer experience this time around has been pretty incredible. So I wanna go through some of the details of what the React Native team have done how the ecosystem has improved over the course of the last five years as well, and actually get into the details of why React Native is such a solid mobile development tool today. So for starters, we have tools like Expo and EIS, which is a build tool and ecosystem around React Native. And the main benefit of this is that you no longer have to deal with all of the issues around native dependencies because Expo will handle all of that for you. Meaning if you need to integrate push notifications, in my case for the app protocol that I built, I integrated push notifications, health kit, auth, and I didn't need to open Xcode a single time to integrate all of that. And even getting the app into the app store in production, ready for users to use, I still didn't need to open Xcode a single time. With Expo, everything is managed through this central file called app.json. And that means you just do all of your configuration here, including things like the app name, and also all of your plugins. So in our case, we have Expo Router here, some splash screen stuff, Crisp Chat, React Native Health, the authentication modules, even things to render videos. You just have to update the config file, rebuild your native dependencies, and you're pretty much good to go. All of the previous pain of having to go into Xcode and manually edit objection C code has pretty much vanished. And you still get the main developer experience benefits of working in a platform like React, such as hot module reloading, which isn't even available in native iOS or Android, as far as I'm aware. So aside from all of the native dependency stuff and the developer experience, the performance has actually increased massively as well. And this is one of the biggest bugbears a lot of people had with React Native back in the day. So the React Native team have pretty much solved this problem by completely rebuilding the architecture that the JS layer used to communicate with the native layer. So let's take a look at how the old architecture works compared to the new architecture so we can just see where all of these performance gains come from. So in the classic architecture, you'd have the JavaScript layer where you'd actually write all of your React code. So when you're writing components, you're not using divs or spans, you're using the React Native tags like view and flatlist. Everything had to be serialized and deserialized and then batched together, sent across the bridge, and then any click events or user interactions would again be serialized, sent back to the JavaScript layer before they'd be picked up on that side so you could respond to the event. This was really slow because of all the serialization that had to occur. And then when you was trying to achieve 60 FPS rendering, anything below the top end iPhone of the day was pretty much dreadful from a performance perspective, particularly when running on things like old Android devices. Even running on modern Android devices at the time was terrible for performance. So this has all changed now with the new architecture. The bridge has been completely removed. So there's still the concept of having everything running in the JavaScript environment and then communicating with the native environment. But now we don't serialize or deserialize and it's also synchronous. So this is literally called the new architecture and the React Native Docs have an entire document on 
this exact topic. So the new architecture removes the async bridge between JavaScript and native and replaces it with a JavaScript interface. JSI is an interface that allows JavaScript to hold a reference to a C++ object and vice versa. With a memory reference, you can directly invoke methods without a serialization cost. So this is where the biggest performance gains come from. The bridge has been completely removed. We can hold C++ references in the JavaScript layer and call native modules directly without having to do all of that extra work. Shopify are also massive users of React Native and they recently released an article called Five Years of React Native at Shopify. So here they say, five years ago, we announced that React Native is the future of mobile at Shopify. Today, we're excited to share the progress we've made, lessons learned and what the future holds. To recap, we decided to switch to React Native for three main reasons. One, write it once. Stop building the same feature twice, once on iOS and then once on Android. Talent portability, enable devs to work fluently across iOS, Android, and web. Ship more value, spend more time delivering value to users instead of chasing feature parity. So these are also the main three reasons that I chose React Native early on and again in the most recent app that I built. I didn't want to develop on both iOS and Android. I also didn't want to reskill and learn those platforms, mainly because I didn't want to build the app twice, once on iOS and then once on Android. The cost for that, particularly for solo developers, would just be astronomical. So they go on to say, we're happy to share that our transition has been quite successful. They also make a note as well about performance here. Our apps are blazing fast, less than 500 milliseconds screen loads and stable, 99.9% .9 crash free sessions. I've also noticed this as well in my own app. Since releasing to the App Store one month ago, we've had zero crashes, which is pretty insane. And then we've got a section here, what did we learn? React Native apps are fast. We care deeply about performance at Shopify. As our CEO Toby says, not all fast software is great, but all great software is fast. The biggest question we had while switching to React Native and the main reason we didn't do it sooner was whether we'd be able to achieve our performance goals with it. Fast forward five years, React Native apps are fast. We achieved sub 500 millisecond screen loads in the Shopify app, and you can now learn how we did it here. So in this article, they mentioned they developed a component called Lazy Scroll View. One of the first things we noticed was that, one of the first things we noticed was some of the important screens were long and rendered a lot of content outside the viewport. Even if only 50% of the content drawn was hidden, it was still a lot of extra work. To address this, we built a component called Lazy Scroll View, which is internally powered by Flashlist. Flashlist only renders what is visible during initial render. The conversion resulted in significant benefits, reducing load times by as much as 50%. They also then go on to mention building every screen as a list. Another major initiative was to rewrite all screens as lists. No matter how big or small they were, we wanted to have only drawing that was required become the default. So we built a set of tools on top of Flashlist called List Source, which only renders what's visible and updates only the necessary components. I actually took a similar approach on protocol as well. So we have the app open here and some of these charts were pretty complex to render. We're fetching all of the information from HealthKit, rendering it on screen as a chart, computing the positions of all the views and also allowing the user to switch between days by just scrolling like this. So the way I achieved strong performance in this case was to use a flat list and only render what was actually on screen, but still you can just scroll and there's no performance lag whatsoever. And this is just an iPhone 13, so it's not even close to the best iPhone in terms of performance. Now, aside from all of the pure development stuff, actually getting your app built and onto the App Store also used to be a massive pain in the ass. And typically in the past, we used tools like Bitrise, which is a CI CD platform built for mobile DevOps. And you could build your iOS and Android apps on these platforms. But the main issue was that you had to set up all of the workflows yourself. They very often run into obscure problems with the native code, Objection C, Java. And if you were not an expert in those fields, those could take a really long time to solve. That has been solved as well with Expo and Expo application services. So all I have to do now is run npm run build production, which is going to trigger this command here. This just runs a type check, runs my tests, and then triggers this command, EIS build platform iOS, connects to the production profile. And then the key part here is that it's automatically submitted to the App Store. In Expo, this would just trigger a build, send it across to App Store Connect, which means I could then just download it in test flight, give it a little test, and then just submit it to the production App Store. So if you're thinking about building an app for mobile, 
I think React Native is a solid choice. The developer experience is fantastic. Performance is now really solid. And all of the build tools and the ecosystem around it have been massively improved by Expert. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.